Okay, so I've got a site that uh, I've um, resurrected like before, and um, we're back in WooCommerce. Now, we should see that there's a lot of similarities with WP Commerce versus WooCommerce. WooCommerce is a lot more polished, and we saw that there were a lot more extensions that do more depending on what you're trying to do. Different payment gateways, different ways of selling products, and so forth. Let's see how the, um, the variations work, because uh, it's similar sort of concept, but a little different compared to WP e-commerce. Uh, remember, over on the other plugin, we had to create uh, the different variations and then attach them to a product. It's going to be similar, but here they call it attributes. So let's go over to products screen and then attributes. Yes? Um, I, I can probably figure out how to you know, add it, but do I need to delete the other one first? Yeah, it was a little bit of a setup. You can deactivate it. Okay, deactivate. You don't have to delete it, you, you deactivate it. You might have to also then remove those items from the menu because the menu links are going to point back to pages from the old plugin. So change your menu, deactivate the plugin, and then give WooCommerce a shot. <clears throat> so uh, attributes let you define extra product data such as size or color. You can use these attributes in the shop side by using layered nav widgets. OK, so what this is, what's the name of the attribute? And uh, we'll just keep it simple to uh, have the same sort of concept as we've done before. Uh, we wanted to have groups of cookies. What did we what did we decide on as the name of a group of cookies? A batch. A batch yeah. So it's going to be a batch of cookies. I want to buy three of them, or six of them, or twenty-four of them. It's it's a batch. Um, so going to add that attribute. Um, then we've got configure terms on the right side. Uh, this is one thing that's going to be different already from the other plugin. Let me go back. Uh, in the other plugin, remember we had added like a, the parent name, and then there was a, a selector that said select the parent and then add the items. Well, the item of a batch on the other plugin was. Um, half a dozen, one dozen, two dozen. Those were children. Those were attached to batch. Here it's a little different in that we have to go into or edit the parent that we just created. So I just created batch. Go ahead and configure terms. Hover over and you'll see configure terms. Mm -hmm. <coughs> No batch found. Hmm. Try to refresh your screen up there. Click the little refresh button. See if it appears. If it doesn't appear, you. It doesn't offer configure terms either now that I've got it back. Weird. Do we need to add what? No, we're in the right place. Yeah, we're in the right place. Oh, I came up. Second. Yeah, so after, after we click the. After I click configure terms, yes, it will say. Uh, no batch found. Yeah, that's fine. We're, we're editing the product batch, so we're in the right place. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're adding now the sub-element. Now we're adding the one dozen, half a dozen, and such. So one dozen, twelve of our item. So yes, it is confusing compared to the other plugin. It's the same end result eventually, but the idea, the execution's a little bit different. The idea is the same. The execution's a little different. We first create the parent element, then we have to then add terms. Once we're in add terms, here's where we then name the variations. One dozen, description if you want, add new batch, and that will then get attached to what a batch is. We sell batches of one dozen. Let's add then two dozen. Total 
24 of our item, and then half a dozen. they're in some sort of order. I would like them to be in a certain order, the one that makes sense, half, then one, then two. This one makes it a little easier. Do you see that you do have the um, that little four-headed arrow if you go to the edge of the particular item and you can grab it and move it. Um, this is one of the issues we had with the other plugin. Um, that, well, how do I order them exactly how I want? Um, Bulk actions? I don't know. You need to click, uh, probably, you need to then click add terms. So uh, part one of this, like we saw with the other plugin, was to create our variations. And then part two is to attach them to a product. So we'll go do that. We'll, we'll do this with a new product, because uh, we've only got one product from last time. right? We've got the pecan pie. Uh, I want to use batches, uh, this time for cupcakes. So let's go over to products, add new. We'll call the product um, cupcake or uh, chocolate cupcake. I don't have a category for cupcakes. Obviously, I would, I would want to create one uh, and then um, start to populate those very easily. Then we can click here on the right side, category, add new category, call it cupcakes, add it. So our, our chocolate cupcake product is added to the cupcakes category that we that I just created. So far, it's exactly the same as before. The big difference now is when you scroll down to the um, product data, um, attributes, under attributes, we have a drop down menu where batch should be there, that was the parent variation or variant. Need to add. I'm going to attach. Batch will be attached to this cupcake. Okay, so we're saying, yes, I want the person to be able to select a batch of items. Okay, values, select terms. Most likely you're going to do select all. In terms of do I want, um, when you click on the box of values, they'll, they'll pop up there. But most likely you want them all. That's how we made them. I want a half a dozen. I want to sell half a dozen, one dozen, and two dozen. So it's usually what you want is select all of the possible values that we created for attributes. 
Now, I don't like that they're kind of throwing a bunch of different terms at us. When we're looking at attribute, uh, the, um, you know, we've got the, the name of the new attribute and such. Um, they're called terms here, which I, I never quite like that name compared to the, the name on the other plugin. But then it does that make sense here? Okay, we've added a term to batch. It should be, this is a variation of this variant set. That's what, how I would call it. Because then it'll also make sense over here. Custom product attribute, and usually it's going to be a variation. Here they call it attribute. So, okay, custom product attribute. What's the name of the variant set? So I selected it, I added it. Then it's the values. Select terms. Okay, that's again different kind of terminology. You should keep it consistent. But I want all of those terms, all those variations, so I'll just click select all. Save that to attach it. On the fly, I could create one right now called three dozen. The problem with that is only this product will have the ability to have three dozen. It doesn't add three dozen back to the whole parent batch. It'll still be one, two, or half dozen here. So it is better to add your, your possible values here to the parent than attach them. But you could create one if you wanted, but it'll only apply to this one. Yeah. If you go back in and, and add three dozen to the batch in the parent area, will it automatically update all of the that's a good point I'm not quite sure when I've set this up for clients this is something we do early on so we want to figure out exactly what they want so we don't have to go back I haven't done it very recently because these clients we already set it up a few years ago and such so I can test it a little later I don't know I sort of feel like they won't get added if I go back to the parent and add three dozen I don't believe that will trickle down to here because we had to manually select one dozen, half dozen, and two dozen, right? They didn't come in automatically. So you'd have to go back to your product, that there'd be a new one, and then you, you add that one, and then you get it. So I don't think it goes automatically. I'm going to save that attribute. And then now we've got these... Um, Got these different uh, prices. Actually, I'm missing something price wise. Where did they put the price? Um, Oh, um, it's it's one more thing. Uh, we're I'm accidentally showing you in the wrong spot. It's not a simple product anymore. Uh, that was something we should have said early on. Sorry about that. It's not a simple product anymore. What's that? Uh, variable product. Group product will be like you want to sell cookies and milk. Two different products grouped together. We should have done variable. Sorry about that. So we'll select variable product. It'll reset what we did here. Um, so we have to go back. Oh, it didn't. Okay, that's good. So variable product. Make sure it's on variable product. Attributes. Should have remembered what we just did. Uh, these values of one, two, and half are going to be used for variations. So we have to turn this on too. I'm going to write this in the notes in just a moment. So it is much more involved to do variations in WooCommerce. But uh, I want these to be used for variations. I want the one dozen, two dozen, half dozen cupcake. So save that. And now when we've got the variations screen right here, there is the possibility to then start to create the various prices for the variations. I want to create variations from all of the attributes that I've attached. So select that, create variations from all attributes, go. 
And it just gives you a little warning that uh, when there's a lot of variations, it could be slow to do these updates. Uh, for example, I could have uh, I could I, ha I could have cupcakes um, that have uh, the the batch as well as uh, gluten free, vegan friendly, um, you know, low fat. I could have those kinds of three variations as well. So what it's saying here, this is going to be okay. Three times three times three times three, because with the one dozen, you have the possibility of low-fat vegan and um, what was the other one I said? So gluten-free. So okay, three possibilities for that one variation. Then I got the other variation, two dozen, which will have its three variations attached to that, plus the other um, half dozen with its three variations. So three times three times three, you'd have nine total possibilities of prices and such. That's what it's saying here. Are you sure you want to link all variations? This will create a new variation for each and every possible combination, max of 50 per run. So usually you'll never get to that level, but I have dealt with a client, a restaurant, that they were making it way too complex for themselves in that they were trying to sell, okay, you can buy the meal and it can have a soda or not, and it can have tortillas or not, and they could be small, medium, and large, and there was just way too many variations. They simplified it down to one size of, uh, you're not even giving an option of how many tortillas, it was just like, okay, um, they come with it or whatever. So it's just something to know, just click OK. And then we will see, okay, three variations added. And then here we go. So I'm going to be able to have one dozen, two dozen, half a dozen. It's not obvious, but these things open up to then further be able to put a picture, a specific skew, is, is are we using it or not, downloadable, and the most important part, part the price. So you can see that. Let me write these notes, because it was a lot more to do than the other plugin, and it really helps to have a guide the first time if you're going to do variations. Variations, WooCommerce. So step one in products attributes. In product attributes, add a new attribute to click on the terms, add terms. Click on add terms to your new Variation, the parent. Once we're in there, you're going to add sub attributes. Add your sub attributes to the parent. So I've added them, their names, etc. Then on your products, four. add a new product or existing product. Be sure to change it from simple to variable product. So down here in the product data. Change from simple product to variable product. In the attributes, in product data attributes, Select your your parent.
from the custom product attribute. to variable, confirm that you do have uh, attributes, yep, add them there, and then variations. So, yes? I have um, my variation attributes going all in one line. Okay, what happened there was you perhaps, when you were creating your, your attributes over here, are you saying on this screen or the other screen? Uh, Oh, they're, they're fine. If you're in variations, you're going to see them. Where do you so see they're them? They're not stacked like that under, under the variations. They're not stacked? They're not individual numbers. I've got them all. Like, okay, the I'll, I'll check you in a moment. Not quite sure what might have happened there, but I'll check you in a moment. So, uh, we added the product, I s or the attribute. I then save the attribute. Um, then we go over to variations. In product data variations default form values you're setting that to actually had a different name there um, what was that called um, it had a slightly different name add all vari all variations something like that. Let me just confirm to put it in the, the notes. Select all. Select all. OK, yes, yes. So uh, not there yet then. OK, uh, in product data, then we had Values, select all, turn on used for variations, save. So I did the select all, I use the variation, I save it, then we go over to variations. And then here, from add variation box select your parent and then go now why do they call it go instead of add or save okay select parent click go Eight. Now you have variations where you can specify details. So for the for the for the one dozen, uh, we'll do ten ninety nine in stock and you have all of that stuff you can set up what's the shipping what's the tax is it in stock so much inside of the two dozen okay uh, we'll sell that for 20 bucks 20.99 yep when you have like like you have a batch of cookies but what if you have a batch of uh, donuts or something like that in other words uh, when you one pound will be different prices for different items it's attached for. Is there any way to put a variable in there? Or so do you have to make a one pound for each item? A one pound of, of um, you know, It's, it's going to be another attribute. Okay, so you're going to have to do a pound attribute for each item. No, you're going to need to do a weight attribute, oh. a weight parent. And then you've got the one pound, two pound, three pounds. 
So then you're going to attach the weight um, attribute as well as the batch attribute. Then you can have the one pound batch of seven cookies. So it's two different parent attributes. And then here you'll have all of those possible variations. But um, like even with cookies, say you have one cookies, uh, one batch is like seven dollars, another batch of another Milano's or whatever, or eight. You set them here. You see I've attached the batch to chocolate cupcakes. And so okay. here I add the price for chocolate cupcakes. I then, when I create uh, pecan cookies, I still want to use one dozen, two dozen, half dozen. But then I have the ability to go to the individual cookies and, and set each variation that way. Okay. Yeah. OK. So I'm going to save those changes, and I can publish that product. Chocolate Cupcake now has, a, ha, has the batch variations. I can go visit site, shop. And I got chocolate, chocolate Cupcake, and it tells me in this case in, in WP Commerce it says starting from $6.99. Here it gives you the, the, the range of what I typed into those boxes from six ninety nine to twenty ninety nine. Now this this I have right away add to cart because it's only one thing. It's pecan pie, that's it. But here I don't have add to cart because you have to pick. Is it gonna be one dozen, half dozen, or two dozen? So when I go to select, that's the same as clicking on the product. It's the same as clicking on its name, and then it goes to show me the product in specifics. And then the drop-down box is called batch. That was the name of the parent. And then each individual element in there, even though I thought I rearranged these to be the order that I wanted, it's showing it here. One dozen, two dozen, half dozen. And then now when I select, OK, I only want six. I only want half a dozen. Uh, I've got a clear button there to start over. I've got half a dozen. Add it to cart. I guess I, I didn't save that other part of it, because then it also says category uncategorized. When I left the screen, I forgot to do save. So that would have been in, in uh, um, category cupcake. But OK, so I added to cart half a dozen of this particular product. And I can go over to my cart. And it's, uh, oh, it remembered pecan pie from two days ago. That's nice. And chocolate cupcake, half dozen, one, six ninety nine. Uh, Basic tax two fifty six, flat rate five dollars that we put in. And there we go. So when I then proceed to checkout, I fill in my info, go to pay via PayPal, credit card, debit card accepted, and I make the transaction. That's what I wanted to start off with um, today. Uh, the big idea of variations. They do. They are a little different. Actually, they're very different, aren't they, from WP Commerce? Different terms, a few extra buttons. I wrote it all down in the notes. You'll have those, of course. Questions on, on, on these variations? So you need a new parent attribute called size. And then you'd add 10 inch, 12 inch, 16 inch as child attributes. And then on the product, you add those and then set the prices.
All right, other questions on variations?